Welcome back, brethren. Let's continue on here in Amos, the fifth chapter. Seeking God with all your heart, mind, and soul and being with true repentance is what is required. Look at all the blessings that God has given America. Look at all of the wealth. Look at all of the things that we have, the climate, the land, everything, the food, abundance of everything. Are we thankful to God? Do we pray to him every day? Well, we do, but how about people out in the world? They don't. Look at all of those who don't believe in God and run all the high-tech equipment that we have. You wait and see. They're going to start cracking down on anything to do with Christian, and even the fake Christianity will be cracked down on too. It will come. If they can turn off the president, and if they can cut other people off, that's exactly how tyrants do to take over. And that is also part of the punishment from God because we didn't seek him. Now let's continue on here. Verse 5, do not seek Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal. Do not pass to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Now, Bethel was the, the main worship center there. Seek the Lord, and you shall live. Now, notice what he says here, right after that. Lest he break out like a fire on the house of Joseph. Joseph, what sons did he have? Remember that? Ephraim and Manasseh. Do you have the book, America and Britain in Prophecy? That's all about Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay? So this is directly to us right here today, see? Lest he break out like a fire on the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel, okay? You who turn judgment into wormwood. Doesn't that sound like uh, the judgment that we have had? Remember in Georgia? Stacy Abrams' sister was the judge that they had to go to for the problems with voting. And of course, she willingly turned over everything to them. No, she rejected him, rejected the truth. Wormwood, okay? And leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him who created the Pleiades and Orion and who turned the deep darkness into the morning and him who darkened the day into night. Seek him. Now notice, seek him, seek him, seek him, seek him five times. Five times, he said, okay, yet you've not returned to me. Five times, he says, seek me, seek him, okay? Seek him who calls the waters of, of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, who causes destruction to flash out against the strong and destruction against the fortress. They hate him who rebukes in the gate. They despise him who speaks uprightly. And isn't that what happens? How many people would really listen? You know, sometimes you wonder, what would happen if any true minister of God would get up in a pulpit in the Sunday-keeping church and tell them they need to repent of Sunday-keeping? 
they would have the deacons up there moving him out as quick as they, they could, right? They hate to be corrected. And they despise him who speaks uprightly. Therefore, because of your transgressions upon the poor, because you have you take tribute of grain from him, though you have built houses of carved stone, you shall not dwell in them. Though you have planted desirable vineyards, you shall not drink the wine from them. For I know your many transgressions and your many sins. God knows them all. You know, David said, where can I hide from you, Lord? If I go up in heaven, you are there. If I go down in the depths, you are there. If I'm in the darkness, you see me. It's just like the light. No one can hide from God. But because God has given free moral agency, he wants everyone to choose. He didn't make us robots. We must choose. They afflict the just, they take a bribe. Ho, ho, why do they ever? And they turn aside the poor in the gate. Where are the homeless? Who's taking care of them? Have you ever gone out homeless? Look at their circumstances. Now we take care of some of them here with a few things that we have. And it's been really cold lately, so we've gotten good sleeping bags for them, so at least they can be warm. But they're pitiful sights. Those of you who come down 101, you see it all lined up along the, the homeless along the way? Think about if you live there. Think about what New York City is becoming. Think about what Los Angeles is becoming. You know, pretty soon you reach a point that the ability to return becomes harder and harder and harder and harder. See? So what are they doing for those poor people? No, they don't take care of that. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silent in that time for it is an evil time. That's what it is today. An evil time. Seek good and not evil. That's what this whole country needs to do. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as you have spoken. Hate the evil. Now, what is evil? Lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, sexual perversion, idolatry, other gods. Those are evil. And they bring penalties upon you automatically. You may never know it because you don't know God. And if you've never had a personal encounter with God in deep repentance toward him, you may not even understand what I'm talking about. Hate the evil and love the good. That's what God wants. Love the good. Now someone just showed me a sample of the honesty of different nations. They took various countries and put money in wallets and left them out for people to find them. Okay. Hardly any of them brought anything back, and the worst ones were the Chinese. And the Vatican was the worst. And the Department Against Corruption kept them. Now think of that. <laughs> that tells you a story, right? Okay. And I remember a time when there 
was on the news that a big money bag fell out of a Brinks armored truck and a man, man found the money and he turned it in. Well, all of the talk show hosts down in Los Angeles were going bananas because people would call in and say, well, why didn't you keep it? You had it. Look at thousands of dollars. But his answer was, it wasn't mine. How many would do that today? Think about it, okay? Seek good and not evil that you may live, and so the Lord of hosts shall be with you as you have spoken that you want. Hate the evil, love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. So even when there are these terrible judgments that come along, that also affects the society as well. Why? Because the judges are there at God's instruction for every nation, the civil servants. And they are the ones who are supposed to enforce the good and punish the evil. But they're so corrupt they won't do it. Okay? It may be now notice, it may be, in other words, if you do all of these things, hate the evil, love the good, have proper judgment, change your life, draw close to God, it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. So this is directly to America and Britain today. Therefore, the Lord of hosts, the master that says this, wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, alas, alas. Now, we can look for that to happen. We've already seen a couple of instances where they shut down a highway or two, and think about that. They shall call the tiller to mourning and those who are skilled in mourning to wailing, and there shall be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to those desiring the day of the Lord. What is it to you? Now, I get, I get an email notice every once in a while from a place called The End is Near. The last one I got, the pre-tribulation rapture is almost here. Okay. If you don't know about the rapture, you need to get the ruptured rapture from us. We'll send it to you. God is not going to take those law-breaking, commandment-breaking, God-defying, fake Christians to a place of safety so they won't see harm. Guess who's going to go? A few. A few. I'll probably have to bring a sermon on that. People in the past, a little sidebar, they used to say, well, Petra is the place of safety. Well, go online and look up Petra and say, would you like to be there? And then you have to ask a question concerning all of the hierarchies that think they're going to go to a place of safety and ask the question, who's going to be in charge? Why? Get to a place of safety, the first thing you do is have a knockdown, drag out fight to find out who's going to lead it. Okay. <laughs> so, don't count on that. God is going to take whom he's going to take, and it's not going to be by Boeing aircraft, 747s flying to Jordan to get to Petra. It's going to be angels. And the angels will make the right decision. And when that happens and you're still here, you better know 
You got to dig in because it's tough times ahead. Yes, woe to those desiring the day of the Lord. What is this to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a snake bit him. Now, have, have you been watching the History Channel with the invasion of serpents or snakes? in Louisiana and Florida? One python can bring about a hundred offspring a year. They have so many in the Everglades that they are paying men to track them down and kill them. See? Now, that was quite a revelation. Okay. Verse 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Now here is the main reason. Right here, the next few verses. Because someone's going to say, well, why would God do that? Well, everything that we have in this society and every society in the world is patterned after the good and evil of this world under the aegis of Satan the devil. Now you may say, well, that's a, that's a hard thing to say. Well, look at it. Let's reverse it. Show me one nation in the world that's for God the way God says you need to be for him. And with all of the fake Christianity, we're going to see, which reminds me, I have this for you to send in, okay? Bible answer to the evangelicals. Because they think they're God's meow to Christianity. They are not. Okay, and it comes with a CD, and go th what it does, it goes through Scripture. See? So let's read why this is coming. He tells us right here, verse 21. I hate, now if God says he hates something, I despise your feast days and will take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Now think of that. Next time you watch TBN, if you can stand it for five minutes, okay? God hates that. Why? They're taking his name in vain. They're preaching lies as if they're truth. And their days, what are their feast days? Sunday, Christmas, Easter, New Year's, all of that. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard the peace offerings of your fat animals. Well, they don't have sacrifices today, but that is true in all of these assemblies. You look at them. That's quite a thing. Take the noise of your songs away from me, for I will not hear the melody of your harps, but let judgment roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Okay? Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness, first of all, starts off by being keeping the commandments of God. But the righteousness that God desires is you having the Holy Spirit in you after repentance and baptism, and that you have direct connection with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. There can be no greater righteousness than that, and that comes from God. See, So this is what God wants. 
true righteousness. Not simple little stupid songs to make everybody happy, 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 happy. See? Just like with Christmas, look at that. Oh, it's so much fun with the kids. Sure it is. Satan wants to indoctrinate them. So you lie to them. So how can that be good for the children if you lie to them? And how do your children react to you when they find out that you lied to them all these years with Santa Claus and the gifts and everything like that, and you used, you would correct them for lying? Happens to every child when they come to the knowledge of the truth, right? They don't have to know anything about God. See? The way I found out was I finally discovered the presents that Santa Claus was going to bring in the closet. So I went to my mom and I said, there is no Santa Claus, sister. She said, well, really, no. I said, but that's lying. Here I was, six years old. But that's lying. Why? Because when I lied, I would get switched. I would have to go out on the willow tree and pick the switch to switch my calves of my legs. Okay? So what did my mother say? That's a white lie. That's a good lie. That just the way the world is, right? Now, let's come to the book of Jeremiah. Now, you go through Jeremiah and really read that and look at two things. We're going to look at a couple of it, of it today, okay? Okay, it's this. Look at the number of times that God pleaded with Israel to return. For 40 years, Jeremiah was preaching repentance and return to God. He was the son of a priest, so he was a priest. So he could stand right at the temple and say, hear the word of the Lord. So think of that. 40 years. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, then look at the history of the destruction of Jerusalem, and you will see that in 539 B.C., it was absolutely destroyed and burned to the ground, exactly as the book of Jeremiah said. Okay? He gave them 40 years to consider. Okay? Now let's come here to chapter 3, verse 12. Now here was Jeremiah's mission. Go and cry there these words toward the north and say, Return, O backsliding Israel, says the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, says the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. See? God wants you to know he's going to forgive only acknowledge your iniquity. That's repentance, right? That you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your ways to strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice. Now circle that, not obeyed my voice. That's the main thing that God wants you to do. And we have the voice of God written down and recorded for us right here so we know what God wants. See? Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am your husband, and I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Okay? Now then this blends in to the millennium, which will eventually come. Okay. Now let's come to verse 21. A voice was heard on the high places, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel, for they have 
perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Isn't that true? Look at it. Think about it. Return. That's what God wants. Always gives return. Always gives repentance. Now this has to apply to this nation and apply to the church. And many of those who have left the church, what are you doing? Return to God. See, because God, he means business. And God does not like to bring the penalty, but will if there is not repentance. Return, O backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly, in vain is salvation hoped for from the high hills, from the multitude of mountains. Truly, in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. That's what it has to be. Return to God. How many times has he said that? Okay. Chapter 4, verse 1. Notice it's also conditional. We must choose. Now, we can't come and fake it with God and flatter him and expect him to do things for us. So he says here, chapter 4, verse 1. If. If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. That is not to your idea of God. God says to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be removed. Because he was telling them, if you don't repent, you're going to Babylon. So when you read the whole book of Jeremiah, that's quite a, quite a thing. Poor Jeremiah, what he went through, you, you'll read it, okay? And verse 2, will swear as the Lord lives. Now notice what has to happen when there is repentance and returning to God. In truth, not in our own ideas, God's truth, God's way. In judgment, making a right judgment about yourself, a right judgment about your life. Okay. And in righteousness, now then listen to the promise that follows and see how great God is and how generous he is. See? Then the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him shall they glory. Okay. So that's quite a thing there. That's quite a plea. Let's look at some other things that God says. Okay. Now, if they don't, if they don't, you will also see this phrase used a good number of times in Jerusalem, which is, I will bring evil. You transgress and do evil against God, he will repay you with evil. That's just the way it works. Chapter 6, verse 17. Also I have set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the ram's horn. Now the ram's horn was always blown when there was a threat of war. Okay? And we've already seen some internal wars here this summer with the burning down of different cities. That's warfare, called guerrilla warfare. Okay? Blow the ram's horn. But they said, we will not hearken. No, we don't want to do that. See? 
Just like one man recently was talking to an evangelical, and she's convinced the law is done away. Paul did away with the law. Well, we'll get back to that next week. Paul can't do away with the law. I'll tell you how you can know. The law is spiritual, the law eternal, and it is always working. Now, if you can get rid of that, then you have to start with something lesser than the law of God. Try the law of gravity. Are you going to get rid of that? Huh? How would your life be without gravity? But it's there, always working, right? And you know it. Every time you drop something, you got to pick it up, right? So here's what's going to happen. Verse 18, Therefore hear, you nations. Now this is a message to the whole world. And the punishment against the children of Israel, the so-called lost ten tribes, is going to be a witness to the rest of the world that when Jesus comes, you better watch out because it's going to be worse for you. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil on this people. How's he going to do that? I want you to think about this next sentence. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Now think about that. God can know the thoughts of everyone, everywhere, anytime he wants to. Okay? Your thoughts are also subject to repentance and changing. Not just your outward, what you would do. See, your thoughts. Now as we get toward Passover and unleavened bread, we are going to see that's the whole process of conversion. See. Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened to my words, nor to my law, but have rejected it. Oh, yes, the religious. So he goes on to say, what's all this frankincense and all of this sort of thing? That's not going to save you. All right. Come to chapter 11. Now, I want you to think about the evil that has come upon Venezuela. You go online, you can probably get a pretty good history of it and see pictures. Look at, look at how they have to live. Not much better than the homeless people in America on the sides of the road. Okay? Okay, chapter 11, verse 3. And say to them, he was to go and speak and say to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man who does not obey the words of this covenant. That's the words of the Bible. How important is obedience? Let's rephrase it. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Are sinners actively practicing sin, going to enter into the kingdom of God? No. No way. See? Which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice. All of us, all the time, have to ask the question, are we obeying the voice of God? And what did we just read about the fruits of our thoughts? See? Now, that's not to despair, to make you despair. That is to, for you to understand the greatness of God and the power 
that he has, and that he will be merciful and gracious to whoever repents. See? God doesn't want to bring it. How many times did he say, I'm not going to bring it if, but if you don't, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Chapter 19. And here's why. It's coming. Okay. Now, there are probably more people against abortion today than ever before. But that's not stopping abortion. Because it is the law of the land. Remember when God said there's no judgment? There is no mercy? Think about those innocents that are aborted, literally torn apart piece by piece. Okay? Now, God says this. He said, you go get some of the priests and some of the elders and you come out to the valley of Hinnom and declare these words, verse 3. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and people of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, which shall cause the ears of him who hears it to tingle. See? As God looks at the collective of all people in America, Verse 4, because you have forsaken me and have profaned this place and have burned incense in it to other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocents. That's what they have done. Okay. They have also built the high places of Balaam to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I never commanded nor spoke, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord. See, how many years of warning have we had? From 1973 until now, 62 million. We made Hitler look like kindergarten. Verse 7. I will make the council of Judah and Jerusalem to come to nothing in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives, and I will give their dead bodies to be food for the birds of the heavens and for the beast of the earth. And I will make this city a waste and a hissing. Everyone who passes by shall be astonished and shall hiss because of its plagues. Okay? And it goes on. This nation is in a difficult position indeed. And we are at, at the brink and prefaces of greater things to happen than we have imagined in the past. And the catalyst that will spring all of it loose will be the calling of the debt. And the dollar will go to zero. And there will be nothing to buy or sell with even if the mark of the beast is not implanted at that time. So we need to think about these things, need to understand it. God's word is true. God wants people not to go through it, but just like with Jeremiah, 40 years of warning and they wouldn't listen. So likewise with us, will we hear God? Will we be faithful to God? Will we love God? Will we cherish the blessings that he's given to us and cherish the knowledge of the word that he's given through his church? 
or will we treat it with contempt and treat it with lightness because we're too busy with our own pleasures? That's the choice for the churches of God as well. So brethren, yes, pray for this nation that there may be some kind of repentance. We don't know but that there will be repentance with the churches of God because we can't keep going on speaking pablum when strong meat is necessary. So I hope that this will give us a clearer vision of how we need to view the coming future. So until next Sabbath, so long, everyone.